Join the X Ministries as we celebrate 30 years of ministry, March the 8th through the 15th. That's one week of celebration with special guest, Dr. Elaine Schaus Waller from Virginia Beach, Virginia. He's a man and a woman who are saying, This is who we will become, that we don't know fully what we're going to become, but we do know that we vow that as we come together, something bigger than each of us individually could do can now happen. Oh, somebody better bless God. And Dr. Noah Nicholson from Chicago, Illinois. Somebody just take a step. Tell the devil I'm walking over it. I'm walking out of it. I'm claiming new territory. I'm claiming new vision. I'm claiming new miracles. I'm claiming new power. Ah! That's one full week of celebration. Our theme this year is looking at ministry through 2020 spiritual lens. Don't forget, March the 8th through the 15th as Acts Ministry celebrates 30 years of ministry. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast. We're glad that you can tune in and study God's Word with us. If you have an opportunity, go back to day 21 as we've been studying the life of of Saul, the life of Saul, as it relates to purpose. And we studied the Bible because it gives us insight, not so much on the character in the Bible, these different characters, but, but the God of the characters and how God dealt with them. And we, we learn about who God is and the way God does things, which is so, so very important. There are so many people that are looking for purpose, but they won't read their Bibles. They're looking for answers, but they won't read their Bibles. And that is a very dangerous place to be. Because when you read God's Word, you, 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 you know God. You begin to understand how God thinks. And that's important to know because some things uh, we should know automatically that is not God. That's not Him. It's like knowing somebody and really knowing them. And somebody come and tell you, uh, that the person did this or did that. And you don't have to wonder about it because you know the person. He's like, that's not them. That's not them. You got to be mistaken. So it is with God. The more we know about God, it helps us to really determine when God is really speaking to us or is something else. So I'm going to dive right into this. This is day 27 of the month of February. And, uh, we are in chapter 10, and I want to start at verse 8. We're on verse 8 today. We talked about all the different signs that, that Samuel told Saul about. And the last, last thing we talked about on yesterday, which was a major point, is understanding. Because you can do something that doesn't mean that's your calling or the position that God wants you in. I believe God says to Timothy, uh, do the work of an evangelist. You know, historically, we know Timothy was a pastor, but you, whatever your hands find to do, it's all right to do it. But understand that is not your ultimate call. So we're going to start at verse 8. Verse 8 says, you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offering and make sacrifice of peace offering. Seven days you shall wait. Till I come to you and show you what you should do. Now, this is this is a very important 
uh, part of Saul's life. You know, as you read his complete story, Samuel tells him he's very specific. Now, you wait till I get there. Now, later on in Saul's life, when he should have waited, he didn't wait. And it changed his life forever in a negative way, not just his life, but it impacted his children, his grandchildren. It impacted his great grandchildren because he did not follow the word of God. Now, God had told him once before through the prophet Samuel, now you wait seven days and I'll come to you and show you what you should do. Verse 9 says, so it was when he had turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. When they, when, when they came there to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he prophesied among them. And it happened when all who knew him formerly saw that he indeed prophesied among the prophets, that the people said to one another, What is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? See, now see, so we, we see this. Everybody got an opinion. And the people here, the people here, they start asking the question because he was prophesied. See, everybody sing doesn't, doesn't make them an anointed singer. Hello. There are some people that sing and, and it's wonderful and it's glorious and it's mighty and it's powerful. But it's for the shower only. It's, it's, it's not... It's, it's not it's not for the sanctuary. So we have to understand that. So he was able to do this under the anointing and, and, and unction of the Holy Spirit. But this was not his purpose. So when you step into purpose, it is just as natural as eating and drinking it. Purpose it, It's like you're at home. It's like you've been doing it all your life. Purpose, purpose. So they start asking the question of Saul among the prophets. Is he a prophet? Then verse 12 says, Then a man from there answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? You, you see that? People start talking. People people been talking before you was born. They will continue to talk. And that doesn't mean that they're right. It doesn't mean that it is God because the majority is saying something. So, so he, they began to talk about, it, began to say, it, began to, it became a proverb. Folks were saying this. Verse thirteen says, "And when he had finished prophesying, he went to the high place. Then Saul's uncle said to him and his servant, Where did you go?' So he said, "To look for the donkeys. When we saw that they were nowhere to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, "Tell me, please, what." Samuel said to you. Now, you know, this, this is amazing here because he wanted to know. He's, he's too anxious to know. And many of us got people like this in our families. They want to know something. They really don't need to know. It's, it's not in their business. It's not any concern to them. I'm reminded of what Jesus said when it came to uh, St. John. And Peter asked Jesus, what would John do? What was what was his future going to be like? And Jesus replied to Peter, what is that to you? In our vernacular, it is, that's none of your business. You follow me. See, we got a full-time job following Jesus instead of trying to worry about what everybody else is going to do. But this uncle, he, he, he tells him, please tell me. See, he's anxious. He wants to know. Sometimes people that are anxious, they want to know. You already know they knows it. You already know they can't hold water, so why would you tell them? Even if you make them promise not to tell them about it, they're not going to hold. They can't hold water. They're going to tell a friend, their best friend, and they're going to tell their best friend for them not to tell them about it. And then that best friend is going to tell somebody else. And before you know it, everybody knows it. Look, look, look at wisdom right here. Stay tuned. For more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. 
Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. On the behalf of Saul, look at verse 16. So Saul said to his uncle, he told us plainly that the donkeys had been found. But about the matter of the kingdom, he did not tell him what Samuel had said. Yet tell him that. He didn't volunteer information. Sometimes we volunteer too much information. Then Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mitzpah and said to the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all kingdoms and from those who oppress you. But you have today rejected your God who himself saved you from all your adversities and your tribulations. And you have said to him, no, set a king over us. Now, therefore, Present yourself before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. And Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, has the man come here yet? And the Lord answered, there he is, hidden among the equipment. So they ran and brought him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, do you see him whom the Lord has chosen? That there is no one like him among all the people? So all the people shouted and said, Long live the king. Then Samuel explained to the people the behavior of royalty and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. Now, I want you to just think, think about this. Think about this. Here is, here is Saul and He's chosen. They brought all 12 tribes. Now, this already is a foregone conclusion. See, what's yours is yours. You don't have to fight over it. You don't have to get in a hurry about it. You don't have to jump in front of somebody else. You don't have to try to outdo somebody else. What God has purposed for you is for you. The only reason why you won't possess it is that you won't. Be obedient to God. You will hinder your own self. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. The only reason. The only reason. The only reason you won't possess it. So, so here, here, I, I, I want you to see this. They bring tribe by tribe. Samuel already know. Saul has already been anointed in secret. He's already anointed in secret. So now, as they go tribe by tribe. Then they come to the tribe of the Benjamin, and, and, and in Benjamin, they broken down in, in segments. So then this is the matrix, and then, then they get to uh, Saul, and they look for him, and he's hiding. So I told you, Saul has a problem. It's, it's low self-esteem, low self-worth. He's hiding. He's hiding. The King James Version says he's hiding among the stuff. He's hiding. He's hiding from leadership. He's hiding from his purpose. He's hiding from what God ordained him to be. And they went and got him. They went and got him. And when they got him, they they began to shout. The people began to shout. Watch this. Long live the king. Long live the king. And then, of course, Samuel had to teach the people how they should behave towards royalty, 
behavior royalty. Ah, Lord have mercy. The behavior royalty. That's that's a very powerful phrase. The behavior of royalty. The Bible says very clearly in the book of Peter that we are a royal priesthood. The Bible also says very clearly in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 31, the Bible tells us that King King Lemuel, his mother told him that wine was not for kings. And she began to tell him it's not for kings. She told him many women, women, it's not for kings. There are some things royalty just doesn't do. It, it, it's, it's not for kings. Other folks can, but your calling, your purpose is not for you. So we see that what he what has been done in secret with Saul, now it has been done openly. I want you I want you to hear this. So now he has been announced to the whole nation that he's king. But but watch verse twenty six. And Saul also went home to Gibeoth, and valiant men went with him, whose heart God had touched. But some rebels said, How can this man save us? So they despised him and brought him no presents, but held his but he held his peace. And you're going to see Saul's going to deal with this with incredible wisdom. Incredible wisdom. Because they don't want to kill these people, but Saul is not going to allow them to kill kill the people. He's going to unite. So he's going to use incredible wisdom with this. But when you look at this, it is important for us to understand that when God puts you in a place and your purpose is revealed, that doesn't mean you're going to have 100 percent participation. Doesn't mean that that everyone is going to congratulate you. And, and I think that sometimes <laughs> we don't understand that. We, we see the prophet Elijah in First Kings chapter 19 when he's running from Jezebel. And one of the things that we look at Elijah, sure, he was tired, but he had done a great thing, a wonderful thing. And you would think that people would applaud him and celebrate him, not want to kill him. And that just took everything out of him. So you're never going to have the majority. I mean, that just, mm -mm, mm -mm. you're always going to have some naysayers. You're always going to have some people. They despised him. He wasn't their choice. He wasn't what they wanted. And you'll never, ever get to the place where you are everybody's choice. So we have to understand that. But notice the other thing about King Saul as, as, as he became king is that those that were against him, he pulled them in. He did not destroy them. He did not destroy them. The, 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 the people wanted to, the valid men that was with Saul, they wanted to destroy them because God touched their heart. God will always touch people's heart to support you and, and, and to see you in a position God has placed you. And they wanted to destroy these men that despised him because they had no right to despise him as king. And he had the authority to do it, but he didn't. He united everybody. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to wrap this up on tomorrow. And we will come back and look at Saul's entire life and kind of just summarize it and move forward. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501 302 4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Axe Ministries. 
in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I am Frank, and this is First Lady Jacqueline Stewart, and we want you to join us for our 30th church anniversary. The dates are March the 8th through the 15th. We have special guest speakers on oh, Thursday yes. and Friday in the persons of Dr. Elaine Schauswaller of Virginia Beach, Virginia, and Dr. Noah Nicholson of Chicago, Illinois. And don't forget about the reunion service. That's Sunday at 3 p.m. in Conway. Make me walk up.